friends, this is Jazz of Jazz Reviews. It's been a few days, I think, but I'm back from my own space-time continuum to deliver unto thee my review for No Man's Sky. Developed by Hello Games, the scope of No Man's Sky is by all means virtually never-ending, a technical mathematical feat, rendering what may as well be an infinite number of solar systems and procedurally generated planets, all with technically unique values. As with any typical game, there needs to be an objective, in this case, locating the center of the galaxy. To do so requires a huge amount of grinding, crafting and inventory management, all in the process of discovering many planets along the way. But just how much will the player want to explore? No Man's Sky is as much a survival game as it is open world space exploration. While facilitating for your very first launch during the basic tutorial, this becomes abundantly clear. A long list of specific resources found on planets or space asteroids are blasted for fuel, ship maintenance and upgrades. Essentially anything utilized by the player, including the exosuit, will demand constant attention. Radiation to access another star system will require one warp cell, and so most of the player's time will be spent mining, harvesting flowers and combining resources to move forward, all while managing extremely limited inventories with fairly awkward and time-consuming interfaces. Crafting, for example, takes up a slot more than it should. Upgrades to anything also take up a slot. Given that all of these interactions make up the bulk of game time, the game becomes very, very tedious. In all truth, the pursuit of obtaining a larger ship inventory to minimize resource trips is as much the player's focus as getting to the center of the galaxy. Why? Because it makes the journey less tedious. The game's economic mechanics and systems are tied to the big objective and general survival. But what if you were to treat the game as one of pure exploration, to take in all of the sights to behold? To officially become the first real-life person to have discovered and named a planet that someone else could then potentially encounter, which is all very cool indeed. To witness your first taste of wonderfully organic alien vegetation that has flourished across the game's vast vistas. To traverse through a seemingly eerie cave filled with overarching minerals and with what look like floating glowworms. To dive into what is a mysterious world unto itself in search of ancient relics before jetpacking out, back into the atmospheric conditions associated with a planet covered in snow. To see any of these things can be a marvel to look at, despite the game's low resolution textures and draw distance problems. All of these places are there to be explored and should not be rushed for the best experience. Also take the time to name and document native wildlife for extra in-game monetary units and zoological satisfaction. Take note that personal, introspective, unfocused exploration is one of the few redeeming qualities to the game, thanks to the procedurally generating systems in play. But the downside, the novelty only lasts so long, and the game is a lonely one. But some people will be able to get a much bigger kick out of this isolation than others. The notion that every atom is procedurally generated is ludicrous, and it was for the time. In my experience, I often stumbled upon the same rock, foliage or environmental settings in a moderate length of game time, but perhaps with a different colour palette and layout. Native wildlife from one system to another many light years away may only appear to possess the slightest biological variation from each other, taken from the makeup of well, another life form you've already seen 10 gajillion years away. But in fairness, there is a very large pool of body parts that will from time to time randomize into the craziest, wildest Frankenstein creations that inhabit land, water and sky. The trouble is that what most haphazardly form into aren't really all that inventive, like this subject of some really badly developed evolution. The game's formula is hidden as well as we may expect, but such patterns will emerge in all aspects of environment, and although everyone's experience will be technically different, it may not consistently feel all that unique or impressive. Not to mention No Man's Sky crashes repeatedly on PlayStation 4, and from launch, has come bearing a few glitchy glitch gifts from the get-go. By now you may be wondering what real gameplay there is besides looking at things while incessantly gathering resources in aid of getting to the galactic center. Every planet will possess certain points of interest, including alien plaques and ruins that provide snippets of backstory and lore, or a translation of an alien word. Alien monoliths, on the other hand, require the player to apply the words they've learned to little pop quiz puzzles that reward the player with new words, trade commodities, health recharges, or an improved standing with a particular alien factor. 
section. If you're persistent, you are also able to find crashed, yet repairable spacecraft on planets, which serve as a necessary discourse given that the space stations from which to trade with other aliens offer purchasable spaceships but at very, very high prices. Many of the stations found on planets will be manned by alien scientists or chemists and the like, willing to issue the player tech blueprints, commodities or another alien word. The player will also run into robot sentinels on every single planet in the galaxy that are not in any way challenging, but will hassle the player if they find them mining too many resources and killing wildlife. All of these items discussed you might think would empower the game with depth and intrigue, but they don't. Dying in the game has virtually no real consequence, you simply follow the indicator to your lost items. Alien NPCs sit around all day every day in their stations and the different alien factions are rather uninteresting. There is no struggle, no conflict between factions, no cohesive narrative or real significance to these interactions, which always feel hopelessly static, mundane. Just knowing that you can look up at a planet and literally fly there is a neat concept. But the destination always feels bare bones, lackluster in content. Wouldn't it have been great to receive more innovative and tailored quests from the idle sloths that inhabit stations, or wildlife that appeared like this? Or this big giant snaky worm thing? Of course none of these things are in the game, and we'll certainly get to the controversy surrounding what was promised and what is missing in just a minute. I'd just like to address the way your personal spacecraft, or the way any spacecraft handles, and that's shit. It handles like shit. Shifting to hyperspeed is immensely satisfying, but the general mechanics here feel on rails, very basic. Space combat during random pirate encounters are depressingly simple and easy to win and endure, but also highly annoying due to the fact that there is no free view cam that should allow the player to see where these ships are coming from. To recharge your shields will also have you fumbling around in menus during combat, during flight. And why do all of the spaceships only vary in pure size and aesthetics? There is no discernible mechanical difference between ships aside from the number of inventory slots. And when we're in the subject of space, the galactic interface itself is diabolically designed. I get it, there are billions of star systems and planets, all of which can be visited. But why in agonizing hell must the player be subjected to a UI that requires so much manual deliberation to find the planet you're looking for? Or to backtrack all the way to a planet that you came to discover, experience and form a real connection with? Now aside from reaching the galactic core, there is an alternative atlas path to follow. Locating and landing inside these stations will net the player new alien words, atlas stones and black hole locations that essentially permit the player to get to the galactic center faster. Not to mention further snippets of loose backstory and philosophical paragraphs. By the end of the atlas path you will need to have stored 10 atlas stones to access the reward for following this path. This equates to 10 precious inventory slots dedicated to achieving that end result. Because if you don't, the game doesn't even permit the player to find any other atlas station to get more stones and return. This is infuriatingly and needlessly punishing. There is after all no warning of this and since the atlas stones are the most expensive items in the game, those unaware would simply sell the stones and preserve the extra inventory slots. But here's the thing, both atlas and galactic core paths are in themselves pointless. I would not normally encourage my audience to spoil a game for themselves, but I would suggest looking up both end results to evade and circumvent the horrible and almost comic disappointments. So No Man's Sky, uh, right. what, what am I doing? What do I do? Marketed from a shadow of mystery, one which will continue to encircle its studio, development and managing director. The question lies with how much shadow was deliberately cast and whether or not the game's marketing was intentionally misleading or even falsified were consumers lied to. I came to No Man's Sky with no pre-notions pertaining to what I thought the game might be, because I simply wasn't involved in the hype train. I was uneducated as to what was promised, what was said, or how many gaps were filled by the imagination of gamers. But having done much research for this review, I believe the backlash is warranted as the game was missold, and its pre-orders determined on a form of contractual basis which has not been met. Can you land on a comet? Yeah, at the moment you can land on a... Not in the game! Do the animals eat each other? Yeah, they do. Nope. As you travel further towards the center of the galaxy, uh, things become much more mutated. Bollocks. And the crazier things are, are, exist there. You can also, like a lot of players do, um, just not gather resources. Uh, not really. So do just never wants to do that because it seems a bit laborious. This isn't an ambient 
universe. I've just got to pick one of these at random. If anything horrible goes wrong, just keep in mind that I've not been here before. Yes, he has. A boundary between two warring factions. Not in the game. I could join in, I could take side. It's a planet and it's kind of rotating around the sun. Not in the game. Now. Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. Can you grief other players? <laughs> a little bit. Absolutely not. The elephant in the room. Is it possible to encounter other players in the game? We were told that it would be, and the fact that two streamers managed to coordinate and meet up at the exact point on release day and could not see each other, with the planet in different day slash night cycles for both, it just makes me very skeptical that there were any server problems or that any excuses were credible. Yes, it would be possible to, you know, come across somebody and we want those moments. You know, I would describe it like journey. Regarding this problem, the Twitter responses from Sean Murray were evasive and contradictory. It seems far more likely to me that this functionality was simply not there in the first place, because everything else hasn't been. Peggy 12. And so, we must finalize upon a game that held extremely ambitious intentions. Given that Hello Games is a very tiny studio, this title must be reviewed as it was in the first few weeks of release, and at the full $60 price tag, which is to say that it cannot be viewed as an inexpensive indie game, but one which is expected to stand alongside all other $60 titles. I issue No Man's Sky. 5 out of 10. No matter how many planets or space there is in No Man's Sky, a massive void remains from which this space has simply not been filled. There are glimpses of natural beauty and elements that may prove more memorable for some, but as an entire package, No Man's Sky is one colossally sized massive box with next to nothing inside. This has been Jazz of Jazz Reviews with my review for No Man's Sky. I hope you enjoyed the review. I've been out of the business for a while, but you knew I'd be back. Feel free to engage in the comments. I'll be there. But until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the comments. You're breaking me down, you're breaking me down. You're breaking me down.